Hello, welcome to another in our lectures on applied regression analysis. Today we're going to take a departure from some of the other talks we've had. We focused on using our software tools to do specific analyses. We're going to step back and build some of the theoretical foundation that we need to get into our next topic, which is generalized linear models. The important foundation for generalized linear models is understanding the exponential family of distributions, not just the exponential distribution itself, but the exponential family, which we'll see is a more generalized family of, of distributions that encompass many of the distributions you're already familiar with. And then from that, we will build models for understanding regression in that context. So we have a sample of observations that follow some random process. These y observations are random, there's n of them, but they often come with explanatory or regressor variables, which we won't deal with through most of the talk today. We're going to focus on understanding the probability law associated with y and understanding that distribution family, and then we'll, at the end, wrap in how it is that we use our regressor variables. Whatever it is, though, our y observations have parameters associated with the distributional form. So these theta i's are the parameters that we're interested in understanding. There may be some additional parameters, some phi parameters, we'll call them, that are less interesting to us in understanding our modeling, but they may still be relevant for the distribution itself. Now the way I've written it here, there's one global phi uh, across all of the observations. In fact, that could also alter, that, that, that could change uh, with observations, but uh, in, in, in subtle ways. One that we can immediately think of that has this form is one that we've used in linear regression, which is the Gaussian family. The Gaussian family, where each of the y observations has a mean, that is mu i, and in the case of linear regression, that mu i is a linear combination of our regressor variables and their respective coefficients. And there is some common variance, sigma squared, that is relatively uninteresting for the actual regression itself, which is concentrating on understanding the conditional expectation of y, given the x's, those mu i's, given the x's. So here's the form of the exponential family of distributions. We'll take a moment to look at this, and then we'll see how this maps into the Gaussian family that we've already discussed, and then extend it into some other ones. Now, as it turns out, you can compute the expected value and variance directly from the functions that you see inside of here. So let's, let's break apart some of this uh, distributional form. So our parameter that we talked about that we're interested in, theta i, is paired up with the y, the y itself and there is some function of that theta i that is also part of this. Uh, so it's how far y uh, times theta i is from b theta i along some scale that is a function of our phi. Now there may still be additional parts of the distribution, normalizing parameters and things of that nature that may be a function of the y and phi but are not functions of theta are parameter of interest. We'll end up calling this theta our natural parameter for this distribution. And we can see how this b of theta i becomes related to the mu, the, the mean, and similarly how the b and a functions give us the variance of y as well from the first derivative of b and then the second derivative of b times this dispersion parameter here, this a of phi. Now this, these uh, erasions, or rather this expected value here follows from a result from likelihood theory where the expected value of Fisher's score function, which is the, for the derivative of the log likelihood relative to our parameter, the expected value of that is zero. These are not difficult resu results to prove, but we're not going to take the time to do so today. Uh, you can uh, prove the uh, expression here about the expected value of the Fisher score function being zero, and from that, this uh, identity about the derivative of b uh, falls right out. That's a good exercise to do. So let's see how we can take a few distributions that we know and love 
and map them into the parameterization that we have with the exponential families. This is the way we normally look at the Gaussian family, where mu i is our mean and sigma squared is our variance. Simply rewriting that, remember that the exponential family starts off with exp of bunch of stuff. So let's put everything into exp of, of something. And so bringing the constant term up front, that sigma square root of 2 pi, uh, bringing that into exp just by exp of log of that. And then plus the exp of the stuff that's already there. Now what I've done here is expand this quadratic, the yi minus mu i squared, and just gather together the yi term, which is going to have the mu i, and the function of mu i that's left over from that, and our denominator, the sigma squared, still comes with that. It's directly uh, provable that, uh, to do the algebra to show this. And again, just combining terms, bringing those exps all together, taking the, t the mu i times our y i, that important function part of the exponential family, this b of theta, our theta here is just mu i, and then other things at the end. So again, our theta i, our natural parameter, is in fact mu i, the mean of the uh, Gaussian family, and phi is our uh, sigma squared. We could also say phi is sigma if we wanted to, and then our a of phi would be sigma squared. It, it doesn't really matter. It all uh, comes out the same. We're going to use phi as sigma squared. So again, b, uh, b of theta is that one half mu i squared. We'll just let a of sigma squared be sigma squared, and then we have the, the c function there that doesn't come into the expected value or the variance. And we already know, of course, mu i is the mean of the exponential of, of the Gaussian and from our exponential family, it's the derivative of b, and we see that's also true. Similarly, the variance, the second derivative of b times our a of phi, the second derivative is just one, and so a of phi becomes sigma squared, and that's the variance. That's exactly what we know from the Gaussian distribution. So we can see that the Gaussian can be written in that form, and we've confirmed what we know about the expectation and variance. Okay, let's take another one. The Poisson distribution, very different distribution from the Gaussian, and yet also a member of the exponential family. In fact, it has a very different support. It's a discrete distribution on the natural numbers from zero to infinity. Yet, it's an exponential family, as we'll see. Rewriting that, again, taking the exp out front, and the log of things as we need to. What is it that is multiplied by yi? In this case, it's not mu i, which was the mean of the Gaussian, of the Poisson, rather, but the log of mu i. So that's our theta, our natural parameter, is not the mean, as it was in the normal distribution in the Gaussian, but rather the log of the mean. A of phi is trivial, and so if theta is the log of mu i, then b of theta is just this mu i here, but of course that's exp, uh, e to the uh, theta. Okay, so once again, very direct to show that, well, if b of theta is e to the theta, well, the derivative of that is still e to the theta, which is our mu. Similarly, the variance, that derivative returns, and we're dividing by 1, and so again, we have what we know from the Poisson distribution, the expected value and the variance are both equal to mu. Binomial distribution, another very different support. This is on the integers between 0 and a particular sample size. So the observations, our n observations, are each binomial observations, each of which may actually have a different subsample size. So here's that where I said the phi might actually change with the observation. If that ni comes into play, then that's going to be the case. Sometimes we want to think of a binomial observation as the count, that 0 through n, or ni in this case. In some cases, we like to think of it as yi, which is the sample proportion. Oftentimes, the reason we're interested in understanding the binomial distribution, we're looking at the 
proportion of the distribution as the thing we want to draw inferences about. So oftentimes our y random variable, the uh, x divided by n, is actually the number that we're going to be interested in. We'll see how we can use that in our exponential family. Now to work with the binomial, there's a few arithmetic things that we want to have in our pocket. Now foreshadowing a bit, I'm going to let theta be log of pi over 1 minus pi just to give us the vernacular the vocabulary term of the logit function. This is the logit of pi. So it's the log of the odds ratio. The odds ratio is the probability of success divided by the probability of failure, 1 minus pi. And the log of that is what we call the logit. And just solving back the other way, uh, we can see that pi can be expressed as a function of theta. Similarly, e to the theta over 1 plus e to the theta, and also the log of uh, failure, uh, log of 1 minus pi, is negative log of 1 plus e to the theta. A little bit of work to demonstrate uh, these arithmetical identities that are going to be convenient to us in just a moment. Okay, so here's the way we normally think of the binomial distribution. We have counts that exist between 0 and ni. They're the number of successes out of ni with a common proportion of the individual NI Bernoulli trials. Bringing everything into the exponential and taking the logarithm of everything inside to um, make that identity hold for, by the inverse. So we can see our Xi and pi of, uh, log of pi i. There's also an Xi over here and our log of 1 minus pi i. So we need to combine those together. And ni x yi is exactly the same thing as xi. I just went ahead and converted to the ni notation here, putting my x's together with my log of pi minus log of 1 minus pi, and then the things that are left over, I still have this n times the log of uh, 1 minus pi, and I have my log of my binomial coefficient still. Now combining this part here, we just have, that's inside the brackets is really just another uh, logit, combining those logs, and that is that theta i. So that is, and dividing the ni down to the denominator. So our yi is now times the logit of pi. What is it that's left behind is the log of 1 minus uh, pi from over here, and that, as we saw before, was the log of 1 plus e to the theta and then the n's go to the denominator as a 1 over n. We have this c function still out in front there. So our natural parameter for the binomial distribution is the logit of the probability. The natural parameter for our Poisson was the log of the mean, and the natural parameter for the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution, was just the mean. Once again, Mean and variance coming out from the derivative of our b function. Our b function was that log of 1 plus e to the theta, and that's easy enough to differentiate, and we see that that's in fact what we meant by pi in the first place, uh, taking the inverse of the logit. And similarly, the variance comes out as, now the way to get this is recognize that your 1 plus e to the theta, you've got e to the theta over 1 plus e to the theta one time, which is pi i, and you still have the 1 over 1 plus e to the theta, which is going to be 1 minus pi, and then you still have your ni left in the denominator. But at any rate, the variance of y is pi, 1 minus pi, divided by n, which is exactly what we know from our binomial distribution. That is the variance of the sample proportion yi. Remember, the yi was the count divided by sample size. Okay, so now we've gone to the effort to demonstrate a couple of different examples of distributions that we're familiar with, which may be relevant for the science problem that we're working on. The data that come to us may be count data. Our logistic regression models is what this used to be uh, called for looking at binomial, or count data that are Poisson, which is Poisson regression. We're going to build these all into a common framework that is based upon that natural parameter and the linear combinations. So we want to build from our regressors, these x variables, a relationship between the linear combination of coefficients 
times these. So our inner product of beta coefficients times the data that come with the y's, these regressor variables, let's just call that eta. Now in the linear model, that eta i is just the linear predictor. Now we're going to generalize that to say, well, if, was, if this isn't just a linear model, it might not be the expected value, the conditional expectation of y that is modeled as that linear combination, but instead maybe some function of the conditional expectation of y that is that a to i, that beta uh, times x. And we call that g function the link function. So here's a very generalized linear model. We still have a linear function on the inside, but instead of modeling the mean, like we do in linear regression, we're modeling some function of the mean. That's our generalized linear model. And the g links the mean, mu i, to the linear combinations. And in particular, when we use the natural parameter from our exponential family, that link function being that uh, natural parameter is what we call the canonical link. And there's many good reasons to do that. There's very desirable properties relative to maximum likelihood and so forth. Why the choice of the canonical link function as that natural parameter for the exponential family is a very nice way of modeling that. Now there still may be transformations that need to happen for the x's to build our model right. We still have to assess model parameters relative to the linearity of that term, but that's a very convenient way for the theory to fall out and getting good maximum likelihood estimators and oftentimes makes for very good models. Similarly, once we have a model for g of mu i, we can invert it to get a model for mu i itself, which is the conditional expectation of y given the x's. So that's the core of what's going to happen with generalized linear models. We have these exponential family of distributions that have this link function, this, this natural parameter, and we use that to link potentially through a nonlinear function to the mean of a distribution, and that's what we really build that linear model on. And in the case of the Gaussian, the binomial, and the Poisson, we can see what those link functions are, and again, they live on very different ranges, they have their own distributional properties, and yet they all fit into this family of the exponential family, and that's what we need to do generalized linear regression.